Tyler Crow, the last time we did a video about Carvana, we were really cautioning investors. The company was, frankly, was in some trouble. It had debt maturing, had tons of inventory it was sitting on. It was struggling with bloated costs. The stock had fallen to three or four dollars a share. There was real concern that they were going to default on some debt. And in transparency, this is roughly what Carvana's stock has done since then. If you can't read the numbers, that's sixteen hundred percent up since then. I'm going to compare that to the S&P 500 total returns over that same period. Just to really put it in perspective, Tyler, the S&P's done really well. It's up 37%. And Carvana's done so good from the time that we caution people about the risk that it looks like the S&P 500 has just gone, gone flat. Let's talk through what's going on with Carvana and whether we were completely wrong, or maybe now's the time to be thinking about buying the stock. The devil's in the details. I think we just had a long conversation about it beforehand and let's hash it out on film. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, go to our special link. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Again, that link's fool.com forward slash unscripted. Okay, Tyler. So let's go back in time. When we recorded that video, we talked about it. We'll highlight some of the details here. Carvana was in trouble. Yeah, it was a combination of a lot of things where right in 2021, 2022, as we all remember, post pandemic, there was a supply chain crunch. And as a result of lack of supply of parts, the lack of supply of just about everything, people were hanging on to used cars and the used car market absolutely skyrocketed. The prices for used vehicles was incredibly high. Now, one would think as a used car dealer, you'd be like, oh, that's great for Carvana, right? Well, not necessarily because not only do you sell used cars, you have to acquire them. And if you're paying high prices to acquire those vehicles, then all of a sudden your margins look awfully thin. And that was a big problem that Carvana was having was that their margins were very thin at the time. They weren't profitable. And as a result, taking on debt, mostly kind of short term, the interest and expenses on those were so onerous that things were looking a little challenging and there was legitimate reason to think that the way that they were doing business, what couldn't continue as it was doing. Carvana was very much in growth mode. It was expanding physical locations. It was adding capacity to refresh vehicles, spending lots of money to do those things, de deploying capital to do those things on top of increasing its operations costs at the same time that the pandemic happened. And it became harder and more expensive and more onerous to find used cars. So all of those things happened at the same time. And Carvana got caught kind of way overbalanced. And I think the last video we did, we talked about some debt. It was trying to work some refinancing some debt that was incredibly favorable to the lenders, very shareholder unfriendly. So that was where things were. Let's talk about what's happened since then and how Carvana has managed to succeed to this point enough so that its stock has gone up so much and whether or not we think it's maybe worth taking a closer look at as a buy. Yeah. Normally when we think of cutting costs, we think of take a surgical scalpel, right? Let's trim a little bit of fat here, or try to make us a little bit better. I would more categorize Carvana's cost cutting using a cleaver, because if you look at the income statement and the cost structure that they were able to milk out of this business, it was substantial. From fiscal year 2022 to fiscal year 2023, their sales general and administrative costs went from $2.7 billion to $1.7 billion. So we're already looking at a billion dollar reduction. This is a quarterly breakdown from the beginning of 2021 through the end of 2023. Again, you look at those 2022 periods here, 662, 649, 583, 523. And then this is through the third quarter. This when this document came out. And you see those numbers were cut, as Tyler was saying cut by 40%. That is a massive, yep. massive reduction for a very operations heavy business that is still trying to grow to lower those costs. Yeah. As a result, the gross profit per retail unit, basically the average profit per vehicle sold went from about $3,000 per vehicle to about $5,500 per vehicle. So on a per vehicle basis, everything looked much better. Its cost basis looked better on the whole. It, it, the further down we get the balance up, down the balance sheet, things get a little bit thinner, but there were signs that it was able to wring out a lot of the operating costs that would prevent it from 
basically being able to continue as a business as present, presently constructed. Now, there is a little bit of nuance in all of this, right? Because part of the reason that its costs were slashed is because it stopped doing a lot of things, right? It, like you showed in your, in that slide, advertising budgets went day, way down. So we're not seeing as many ads for Carvana in general. Inventory went way, way down from fiscal year 2021 to end of fiscal year 2023. Their total inventory, which more or less is their vehicles, it was down about $2 billion. It went from about 3.1 to $1.1 billion. And total vehicle sales were down about a little less than 25%. In 2022, they sold 412,000 vehicles down to 312 for this year. And so part of the march to profitability was a, a rather substantial decline in sales, which they absolutely did the things they need to do. But it's a little bit of a trade-off here because this is not the things you necessarily want to see out of a growth business. Or when we think about somebody disrupting an industry, you don't typically see a, a 20, 25% contraction in, in sales. Here's a look of exactly what you're talking about here. So on the right, this is you know, the un number of units sold 313,000 in round figures versus uh, 412,000 in the prior year period, 425,000. So this is, Tyler, to be very clear, this is two years in a row of declines on their 10K vehicle inventory. This is dollars of inventory, not units of vehicles. It was even higher, like you said, at the end of 2021, but the end of 2022, almost 1.9 billion to just under 1.2 billion at the end of 2023. So it sold fewer cars and it further depleted its inventory. So a couple of takeaways from that that I think are important. Carvana really had no choice, right, but to deplete the inventory. And a couple of things were happening, right? Sure, there is a sec secular growth opportunity for Carvana. They've highlighted the their net promoter scores are very high. People like their experience. You go on the website, you find a car, they bring it to you. No negotiating, no dealing with a salesperson. Still viewed as one of the least reputable professions in the U.S. Uh, being a used car salesperson. So there's certainly still secular opportunities there, but it is a cyclical business. And we do know that with interest rates having skyrocketed so much, that has put pressure on prices, consumers are very interest rate sensitive when it comes to expensive things that you have to borrow to buy. So that's played some role in it. I think we should give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt that some of that is just the cyclical impact of rising interest rates affecting buyers. Now, the other part of it too is they had way too much inventory. They have way too much inventory. That's clear because they've been able to go a couple of years depleting their inventory and still have a pretty substantial amount of inventory. And they were also in a position where they needed to cut costs and expenses. They needed to do those things. So they've done those things, right? Looking forward, Tyler, what is your thought about Carvana? Is now time to be thinking about buying Carvana? Sure, the stock's gone up a lot, but pretty sure it's still down, way down. I, I don't want to put too much stock in. We're, we're, we're still down 78% from the all-time high here. I don't want to give a whole lot of credence to the down from the peak because at Carvana's highest valuation. It was such an absurd valuation for this business. It doesn't make sense. And it's a little disingenuous to like anchor to that price and be like, well, can you get back to it? But the point being is that there seems to be a march to profitability here. It's a little bit of a don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Their end of year net profitability was because they were, had a $878 million gain on an extinguishment of debt which is a one-time thing. So next year, that's not a gain we're going to see. On an operating profit basis, this company is still actually losing money. If you look at operating profits, it's still down and it still has very expensive interest expenses. It's about $500 million in annualized interest expense. So with all of those things in mind, yes, the company is, it, it looks like it's doing better, but it is so far from being completely out of the woods of the issues that we're talking about, that again, I, I, I want to put what the stock is doing very separate to the, what the business is doing, because if I want to own this business for a very long time, there are some things that this company has not yet proven to do. And because of that, me, obviously the much more cautious of the two of us, I'm still in wait and see mode. That's fair. I'm with you on that for a couple of reasons. I agree. I think it's a mistake to anchor to a $30 billion valuation for the business. It's worth about $10 billion today. 
and I know price to sales is like empty calories when it comes to valuations, but just to try and rough out some idea, using that price to sales ratio for Carvana trades for about 1.2 times sales compare that to CarMax trades for about you know, 0.5 times sales. So trading for a pretty significant premium to one of its biggest competitors. The other thing too, and this is to me the biggest thing that I think about with Carvana is the prove it mode factor is they sold a ton of cars last year. They didn't buy last year, right? They depleted inventory and they show gross margin, good gross margin on those vehicles. What we have to find out, Tyler, is in a regular operating environment with an inventory level that they think is balanced and is the right size, and is there more churning inventory and not just depleting inventory? Do all of the things work? Are they good at buying vehicles? Are they good at identifying the right cost to pay for the vehicle based on what they're going to have to spend to get it ready to sell? And then having the logistics costs that lay on top of all of that to get the vehicle to the right market at the right price and the right condition, can they deliver on that churning their inventory? and create a sustainable business that actually generates profits. We, we don't really know that yet. 